silence, please. <laughs> This time we'll recess our regular board meeting and we'll open a public hearing for teachers' contracts. And uh, we'll start with the presentation by the RCTA for negotiations on the teachers' contract. Hi, I'm Lori Shane and I'm the chairman mm -hmm. of uh, the negotiating team, which basically means I just organize the meeting. I feel like I have to do and do this. So whoever wants to take it over next year, be thinking about that. <laughs> so public hearing on collective bargaining. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to show you what we can bargain, what we cannot bargain, some basic finance. Uh, there's new bargaining changes for 2021, and then some regulatory restrictions. Subjects of bargaining are salary, our wages, our fringe benefits, which include accident, sickness, health, dental, vision, life, disability, retirement benefits, and paid time off. Um, the prohibited subjects of bargaining, I don't know if I can see it here, um, is evaluations, hours of work, safety issues for students and staff, including COVID-related safety issues, teacher appreciation grants, class size, hiring, assignment, transfer, reduction in force, layoffs, student discipline, expulsion or supervision, and budget appropriations. And there's some more that are prohibited. The school calendar, curriculum and curriculum materials such as textbooks and programs, teaching methods, teacher dismissal, restructuring options for failing schools, ability for a school to partner with an outside entity for dual credit, funding for remediation. And here's just some of your school funding basics. Um, we have two funds now. The education fund is funded by state taxes. It's based on our number of students, the ADM. And that is twice a year, is that not correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. um, used for any instruction expenses, including teachers, principals, counselors, media, library staff, aides, paras, class supplies may not be used for non-instructional items. And then our operations fund, which is funded by our local property taxes, and this is used for our transportation, bus replacement, capital projects, utilities, superintendent, business office, human resources, custodial maintenance, property insurance. It cannot be used for instructional items, and it cannot be used for bargaining unless a resolution is adopted by the board to transfer a specific amount for bargaining. Um, that was hard to get. Yeah. Well, funny. so at this point, we have provided a budget to Hope as uh, your RCTA okay. president, and all of our board members have a, uh, the budget in front of them. But I don't know if you want to kind of walk them through some of the basics as to where we are on our finances. And yeah, we'll. Uh, I think Scott. you probably had that later on in the week. Like, yeah, this may be a good point just to, okay. to put it all together. So the presentation is in your uh, board members, it's in your um, inside pocket, that's the binder that I gave you. Um, the first page is just an overview, I mean I think at this point in time, this is probably one of the last times we'll go through, the, the transition uh, between 2018 and 2019 of the change in funds from five funds to three funds, just kind of a reference um, slide. It's the calendar that we, I think we discussed at the study session two weeks ago, uh, it's also it was, Calendar is also in your binder. Um, just general guidelines of, of, of some of the deadlines that we have to uh, make sure we get the budget adopted by November 1st or to Gateway by November 1st. Uh, the next slide is just a history uh, of our end of the year balances. Um, it's a five year uh, history.
this slide gives a background and review of our um, assessed valuation the last five years. I would think that it, it, from all indications, I would assume that it's going to stay steady for 2022, if not a little increase from some of the guidance that DLGF has put out so far. The next slide will be rainy day fund. Um, I know we've had discussions about some of the things that are possible with ESSER, so this could change, but at the moment, uh, kind of kept it, kept it status quo. Um, of course, the revenues are, there's no revenues in there yet, so I guess time goes on during the fall, we might we can revisit that and have discussions about that. Next slide. Next slide is um, education fund projected revenues. The, uh, the, the big one there is the basic grant that came off of the uh, state financial website from the DOE. Um, our uh, estimated enrollment, um, we'll find out a little bit more on September 4th, well, after September 17th, but Exact, we'll have a little better idea of where that number will be um, based off of our ADM count. Next slide is a little bit of a breakdown of our projected budget and salaries <coughs> or, or the different uh, object or uh, program codes um, in the education fund. The, the first line is the both elementary, middle school, and high school um, and some of the CTE programs. So there's that, that's why there's a big portion of uh, expenditures there. The next page is just the rest of, uh, the, uh, of that. And of course, the transfers are based off of what would be needed in the or the operations fund. So I um, felt like it would be a good idea to budget at the 15% or close. And then if we don't need it, obviously, we won't transfer it. The debt service fund, and this is without yet the general obligation bond. Um, here's the revenue um, tax levies. I, looks like I dropped a, uh, a figure there. I'm, I'm assuming that's probably a zero or probably, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, apologize for that. Um, I do know the final figure is correct though. So, um, but that's what we're projecting for revenue next year. Um, and our expenses will be a little bit under that actually. So. One, the, the top line, that will be the last payment on that for that particular bond. That's the 2011 school construction bond. So, and then the next slide should be the operations fund, uh, our revenues, and of course, tax levies and, and the transfer makes up a lot of that. Next slide, some of the expended expenditures in that. Nothing. Nothing that's really changed over the course of, of last year to this year. Just increases to cover some of the, the costs that have gone up: trash hauling and electrical or electricity and utilities and purchase of buses, etc. That, that inflation is, has increased for us. So, um, next slide should be the bus replacement plan. I think that I, did, I don't believe that I got that one changed in the back of your binders is the correct plan. Um, we're looking to replace a uh, 72 passenger bus, I believe, is what Kevin told me. And we'd like to add, he'd like to purchase a, another white bus feels the need with extracurricular um, activities, we, we, we could use that. And uh, that, uh, so that is next. So that's, that, that's where we're at at the moment. Um, so there'll be a, the next steps would be the public hearing at the next board meeting. Of course, there's input between now and then. Please feel free to share that with me so we can take that into consideration and work, work toward that. But does anybody have any questions? Uh, 
Uh, did you have any more binders? I didn't get one. Sorry, Tom. Do you have any questions? The association stuff is more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bargaining related laws that came about this year um, 40,000 starting salary by 2022. This is inspired by the Teacher Compensation Commission report of a 40,000 start and a 60,000 average as a goal to be competitive with surrounding states. 45% uh, of tuition support money for teacher salaries. This goes specifically to teacher salary and does not include benefits such as retirement, insurances, etc. And in the funding floor, corporations will not decrease expenditures for teacher salaries from one year to the next as long as the state tuition support increases from year to year. Uh, timeline for bargaining, uh, we can do informal bargaining anytime prior to September um, 15th. It cannot be ratified during this time, but we can discuss and start um, looking what each other's needs are. Uh, we're, what we're doing tonight, having our public hearing with the Association and Corporation. Uh, this has to be held before we can meet privately, okay? And then we start our formal bargaining September 15th to November 15th, 60 calendar days. And then hopefully parties each reach a tentative agreement. And then the school board must conduct a public meeting regarding the uh, contract, the notification of the meeting, and a copy of the <laughs> teacher's contract must be posted on the school's website 72 hours before the meeting. Public testimony must be allowed at the school board ratification prior to voting. Other parameters, we have the HERB um, Indiana Education Employment Relations Board. We've done really well with that in the past. Um, Heidi Miller looks it over and we pretty much have never, I think we probably ever had anything too wrong with it there. It reviews contracts for compliances, releases a rubric to dictate the way contracts are constructed on or about August 15th. Uh, new state laws, the state budget, every two years in an odd year sets funding potential for each school. That's this session. Uh, state Board of Accounts, corporations must follow state accounting requirements. And the Department of Local Government Finance controls local budget appropriations. And does the board have any thoughts or corporations? I think we've set our first uh, uh, September 1st for our since we've had our meeting then September 1st for our first informal just kind of get everything out there and start making Todd do <laughs> okay our the association RTC RCTA's priorities this year would be getting our dedicated teaching staff to their proper steps on the salary scale. We still have teachers that are multiple levels below the salary for their experience. Getting the starting salary to 40,000 and adjusting the pay scale accordingly. And unfortunately, with these times we live in, many schools are rewording the sick day section to include a description of how they're just doing it even pandemic days. Who knows why lies down the road there to fit into the picture. RCTA is very optimistic that you, the board, have the same goals as we do for our new contract. And um, can we open it? Can we, anybody? Yes, at this time. Yeah. Uh, uh, please make them short and concise and just be about bargaining if anybody has anything that you'd like to say or ask. 
I'd just like to start by thanking all the teachers. Uh, this past year has been something else. I mean, what you've had to go through and deal with has uh, been pretty tough. So really appreciate all the work you've done. So uh, we'll open it up to comments. This time we'll adjourn the public hearing. Um, you're free to go. It's a school night, so we understand. So, <laughs> but you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Okay. So we'll reserve regular board meeting, and I'd also like to take note that Kyle Rensberger has joined us. Uh, he is on Zoom with us. And I guess the board members here, except Kenny. So we'll start with the financial report. Approval of claims 19,570 through 19,752 for a total of $1,081,304.94. I have a motion to approve. Okay, motion by Joe. Second. Second by Casey. Air discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> Kyle? Aye. Okay. Motion passed 6 0. Uh, next item is the payrolls. Uh, had an opportunity to look at everything over on the payrolls as well. And uh, need motion to approve the payrolls. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion by Kyle? Second. And second by Katie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, 6 0. Next, funds report. All right. <clears throat> in July, in the education fund, the uh, beginning balance uh, was $1,018,084.17. And receipts of one million forty-five thousand seven hundred forty-three dollars and ninety-three cents. Expenses of nine hundred and twenty-three thousand six hundred ninety-seven dollars and fifty-six cents. We were able to transfer one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the operations fund. Our balance at the end of July in the education fund was nine hundred ninety thousand one hundred thirty dollars and fifty-four cents. Our debt service fund beginning balance was. One million five hundred thousand eight hundred seventy-nine dollars and nine cents. We had receipts of fifty-six thousand eight hundred and two dollars and seventy-six cents. There were no expenditures in July. Our ending balance at the end of July is one million five hundred fifty-seven thousand six hundred eighty-one dollars and eighty-five cents. And in the operations fund. Beginning balance in July of one million seven hundred and twelve thousand five hundred thirteen dollars and twenty two cents. We had receipts of fourteen thousand two hundred twenty five dollars and eighty four cents, along with the transfer from the education fund of one hundred fifty thousand. Expenditures in July in the operations fund were two hundred forty seven thousand one hundred forty eight dollars. Our balance at the end of July was one million six hundred twenty nine dollars. $629,591.06. Okay, thank you, Todd. Any questions for me? Any motion to approve the funds report? So moved. Casey? Mm -hmm. I'll second. Second for Joe. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried 6 0. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. Next item is the consent items. Minutes of the July 19th, 2021 regular meeting. Any additions or corrections? Minutes of the August 3rd, 2021 study session. Any additions or corrections? Minutes of the August 3rd, 2021 special board meeting. Any additions or corrections? If not, any motion to approve the consent items? So moved. 
Okay, Ms. McKee. Second. Second by Tom McLaughlin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Mr. Perry, 6 -0. Next item, school meal pricing. So, um, Kathy Wilkinson has included um, uh, her recommendation. This is actually driven by the seamless summer option for all students, which is allowing all of our students within uh, the district to receive free lunches for this entire school year. Um, noting that increases to adult lunches has not happened since the 2018-2019 academic year. The state has recommended to us that we bump up our adult uh, meals from $1.75 to $2.50 for breakfast and then uh, from lunch three ten to $4.60. And again, the state is advising us and this will help offset uh, what we're um, losing in regards to the free lunches for all students within the district. Board, have any questions? You need a motion to approve the school meal, school meal pricing for the 21-22 school year. I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Joe. Second. Second by Katie. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, most past six zero. The RHS handbook change. Oscar, would you like to share your recommendation to the board in regards to your handbook change? Yeah, as uh, taken over there at the high school, we met with the leadership team and discussed the carrying of backpacks. And our freshman team of teachers had asked that um, we not allow those that age of students to carry it, along with our eighth graders who don't carry them. And uh, we wavered back and forth with sophomores, but they're still allowed to carry. And then the junior and senior uh, teams of teachers um, had some points that they made that they would like to continue to allow the students to carry there. In our handbook, it said nine through 12 could carry it. So we changed the language to where it says, you know, 10, 11, 12 can. And then we put the uh, size dimensions of a backpack that um, I guess basically I went on to Dick's uh, Sporting Goods website, looked at the largest normal backpack size and put that into the handbook, which was 28 by 14 by 13, I think. I don't remember what the last number was, but basically 28 by 14 uh, as far as height and width. So um, those that would be the change that we're asking to approve tonight. What's the reason? Why, why are we excluding them? The, uh, Freshman teachers, a lot of, when our kids become juniors and seniors, a lot of them begin to work out in the community and have internships and those kind of things. So our class sizes are a little bit smaller. Our freshman class sizes are bigger. And when they bring in their backpacks, they seem to carry everything with them. And it becomes an inability to, for the teachers to be moving around the classrooms. And they just had put that request in and so that's, I went in, I'll be honest, I mean, I went in trying to convince all not to, but working with our upper grade level teachers, they got to have their voice, and so they would like to keep them, and the freshman teachers would not like to keep them. Uh, just seems like a universal policy, one or, you know, one or all, but to exclude one grade is different. I, mean, I haven't heard that. I just, I, have there been freshman parents upset about it or I had two parents reach out about it upset or I, I don't know if they were upset they were asked why and then I basically explained what I just explained to you so it's a safety issue part of the problem well I mean it's hard to use the safety issue scenario since it, we're still allowing other students in the building to carry it it was more to the teach a team of teachers preferences of not having those backpacks in their classrooms with the number of kids that are in there and just the their inability to kind of manage their stuff within their backpacks so now everybody still has a locker correct yes now when did you know, when i was in school because that was a few years ago everybody just went to your locker and got your what you needed for the next class uh, yeah. that's not done anymore i mean nope <laughs> That's just a straightforward answer. I mean, 
we didn't even know what backpacks were. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. do, you, do you run into a situation where a kid maybe has a class on one end of the building, and then the next period has a class on the other end of the building, and I what do they get five minutes for a passing period? Has that changed or? No, it's five yeah. minutes. Do you have a situation where a kid doesn't have time to walk from his class to his locker, exchange books, and walk to the class? Does that come up? I, I, to just be an open book, I can walk every hallway within that five minute passing period. Okay. Like I can walk the downstairs, go through the upstairs, get back to Pearson's room and back to the, the office area before the bell rings. Okay. Do you have a preference? Did you have, a, I mean, your teachers have a preference. Did you have a preference on what was? I went in a little more gung-ho of removing backpacks, and but I listened to what the team of teachers would like to do, so. As in remove them 9 through 12 or 8 through 12? Yeah, I mean, I was pretty gung-ho about that until I learned what the reasoning is behind. But, I mean, Mr. Stasiak had some really good valid points when we were doing our leadership team meeting of why some of those older students with their maturity and getting them ready for the future years of their lives. So that's where we landed. Board members, any more questions? Not uh, need a motion to approve the RHS handbook change. I'll make a motion. Okay, motion to go. We have a second? I'll second. Okay, motion by Casey. Second. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? All right. Okay. We're tied. That uh, means it passes, correct? Or it fails because of the lack of a majority. Okay. Can we get more discussion on this? Maybe it's yeah. next study session? You know, I guess I'm not opposed to the concept. Uh, and and I'm sure the teachers, like Oscar said, I mean, they're very valid reasons. I just, I just, I have a hard time with that segregation between grades. I mean, yeah, if, if you have enough time to go yeah. to the classrooms, I'm not sure what, I guess I'd like to hear the reasoning why the maturity of moving on in life requires you to have a backpack. Um, I'm not sure I understand that. I mean, I, I can understand the public safety part as far mm -hmm. as having a smaller one, you know, it's a trip hazard, it's a fire hazard, or there's nowhere to put them, or, you know. I would, I would think college-bound students, you know, they, when you're in college, you carry your backpack everywhere. I have the chiropractic visits to attest to that from when I was in school, but, um, because you're not gonna go back to your dorm every time between classes. But I, I again, it's the segregating out one group mm -hmm. that bothers me. It's, I would like just more information on, and, and I don't understand why, I mean, when did it become, and I'm, I'm, I've been out of school a long time, but when did it become the thing that we carry everything with us everywhere we go? My kids did that. I don't know why they my might kids be. are a whole lot younger than my kids. I'm just saying that's more recent. <laughs> yes, my children. But I mean, they have their laptops and, and they all have their phones, I assume. And those things, you know, would be, I would assume they carry those in their backpacks. And, but that doesn't take a massive backpack to get that thing around. And I can see with the laptops now, too. I mean, for, you know, that's an expensive piece of equipment that you're carrying around. You know, and you've got, I don't know, I assume textbooks and all that. You could have your hands full. You don't want the computer falling out on the ground and busting. But, you know, I'll just go back to what Oscar said. You know, he went in gung-ho, removing it from top to bottom. And I'm more inclined to, you know, that way than, than taking out one grade or two. I assume you wanted it gone for safety. Is that my understanding? That would be the argument there. But it's hard to, for that argument because the most recent active shooter in Indiana was at Noblesville, or at least the one that comes to mind, and that kid went to his locker, got his gun, went yeah. back to the classroom, and pulled the trigger. So you can debunk that argument as well if you would like right. to. So. Right. Are freshmen using backpacks as we, I mean? They're not. Okay. Have a we had about two kids who were trying to buck the system, and teachers have 
not allow that. And so, but we can hear what happened tonight loud and clear, and we can change that as we go forward. Oscar, isn't it? I mean, isn't it okay for teachers to say, "Look, we're not going to have this in my classroom"? I mean, is yes. that not? Board says, I, board says policy. The board sets the policy. Teacher follow policy. I mean, if it wasn't in the handbook, then yes, but it is in the handbook, and so board sets the policy. So can we approve that it's teacher discretion then? I think it currently says that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. No, you said um, one of the justifications were the freshman um, teachers said the class sizes are larger, and so obviously the, the bags create, um, you know, take up space, and they can't move around. Have the class sizes gotten larger this year? In the freshman year? No. They were excited about the idea, and the upper grade level teachers were not excited about the idea when I took it to my leadership team. And so we had that discussion, and that's where we settled on. And we viewed it as it could be a chance that we just ramp it in. You know, the current freshmen just never get to carry a backpack as they go through high school, and then by that time we phased it out, or maybe it ended up being a privilege for those upper grade levels so but we can make it work it's not a hill i'm worth dying on i'm just gonna be honest with you i'm just yeah i wouldn't say it's necessarily a dead issue i just felt like we need a little more clarification on i think in a study session you possibly invite that leadership team in and have a discussion and try to gather more information and understand from their point of view I think study session to walk through so you'll have yeah, the access. <laughs> but till then you can fall back on teacher discretion yeah. whether they feel comfortable with it. So. Okay. All right. Next item we move on. Parking lot bid. So I want to thank um, Mr. Heidi for being here and Terry Thornsbury for being here. So Terry, if you would please walk uh, the board through the bid process and then uh, I want to thank Mr. Heidi. He's come in a couple of times to walk the parking lot with me to talk about ideas, to advise, um, and very much appreciate your time and through all of this. Okay. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate it. Um, I didn't make copies, but it looks like it has the actual bid form, so I apologize for not making copies. I typically do, and I just realized I only have one. So um, we put the high school parking lot project out to bid, um, and we received two bids. One was from D DC Construction Services out of Indianapolis and EB Paving here in Rochester. Um, we bid it two ways. We bid it with a base bid for fall construction now of 2021 and a summer construction schedule of 2022. Um, we ended up getting um, only one bid from DC Construction. They put a no bid in for work this fall. Um, their base bid for summer of 2022 was $1,505,260. And then EMB had a uh, base bid for the fall of $1,399,736 and then a summer of 2022 uh, base bid of $1,281,964. So their, their bid for summer was actually, for next summer was less expensive. And um, in discussing it with them and also discussing it with um, schools and everybody else, it was going to be easier with less hassles to do it next summer rather than try to do it during the school year now. Safety is a huge issue size of that parking lot and we would still we tried to figure out a way to continue to do drop off and pick up and it was going to be tricky so definitely like the idea of pushing it to next summer um, and we actually got a lower bid in that process i don't know if anybody has questions for mr thornsbury or mr ivy in regards to My, my recommendation would be that we go with ENB paving with a summer rollout of the construction project. Okay. 
A motion to uh, go with the recommended bid for the summer project. A motion. A okay, motion by Joe. Second. Second by Casey. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, David. You're welcome to stay, David, but if you have you know, another It guy. is a school night. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my backpack in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next item. Agreement with NIESC for media specialists. Sure. So as we discussed at the study session, um, the state does call for us to have a licensed media specialist. Oscar, uh, I went back to Oscar and clarified that that uh, job was posted for a period of time. Uh, reflecting back and talking with the state, only two licensed specialists came out of the state of Indiana this past year with this licensure. I'm um, working with NIESC and meeting um, the lady uh, who um, is interested in tackling this for a couple of the smaller districts who are not able to fill this position. She gave her qualifications or her uh, what she intends to do with the job description and I've included that. It was really enlightening to have that conversation. Her goal, and she's a huge advocate for media specialists and I think as Katie uh, pointed out at our study session, those things that we don't want to lose uh, with a media specialist. And so she is advocating for two things. One, to make sure that she trains and supports uh, the instructional assistants in that position to the best of her ability. And in that you can see that there's a conversation around the education, uh, being able to build a rapport with teachers and understand their needs and what they're learning. But she's also um, advocating at the state level that um, this be changed so that you have certification rather than licensure. And this is these are some of the items that she's proposing and her hope and desire is that she either inspires somebody to go into the profession or that she can start a certification course in which um, they're able to tackle a lot of these uh, components that have been outlined. My proposal would be, because we need one and obviously haven't been able to locate one, to at least um, approve this for this year, uh, evaluate the program as we continue to post the position and see if we can get somebody licensed. If not, making sure that we uh, continue to evaluate, have those conversations, and, and roll this out so that the school is in compliance with what the state's requiring. I was grateful to get that Thank for you. now. Yeah, you know, it was great was to it was sit down. I was able to spend about 40 minutes with her, and it was very enlightening. A lot more comfort going into that. I agree. Any other questions? I need a motion to approve the agreement with NIESC for media specialists. So moved. Okay, motion by Katie. I'll second. Second by Kyle McLaughlin. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, most carries 6 0. Thank you. Okay. Next item. We went through a lot of policies. <laughs> and I'll list them for you. This will be the second reading in policies 5895, 1220, 3120, 4120, 4240, 8500, 8510, 8606, 4162 0A, 5111.01, 1422-3122, 4122-1422.02, 4122.02, 4122.02, 1662-3162, 4162, 5571, 2260, 2260.01A, 2260.01B, 5517.01, bylaw 164.4, bylaw 164.6, bylaw 167.1, 1623, 4123, 4123, 1662, 
3362, 4362, 5517, 2260, and 2260.0. Uh, so I didn't hear any bingos, so it's going to be any questions. <laughs> I was just trying to pull my lottery numbers out yeah. of there. <laughs> <laughs> there would be some lucky ones in there. Well, for those of you in the audience and even on uh, Zoom, the majority of these policy updates had to do with Indiana residency. So they were policy updates for requirements, adding requirements to make sure that um, Indiana residency was a requirement, proof of Indiana residency, because there were some issues. And then there were some Title IX. Um, already they changed some policies and replaced some, some of the Title IX language, uh, which again is, all federal and state. I mean, the majority of these um, were more of a this has changed and you need to adopt them. Um, I do have a brief description if anybody is interested in going through them. I'll be happy to share my notes. Um, there were some replacements, there were some deletions as far as the replacements of the Title IX. They deleted the other ones. And then I don't remember, do we have to approve? There were a couple of these that the board had to make a decision on. Are we going to do? Yeah. Are we going to do the third reading and the vote at the next mm -hmm. board meeting? So, mm -hmm. did you want to discuss those tonight again? Well, I or thought we were then. Did we agree that we were going to take the recommendations from Dr. Snotty? Well, and that's what the one we had. I think so. And I just wanted to make sure we weren't getting to like the next meeting and being like, oh wait, we need to make a decision yeah, on this. We can look at those specifically at the next study session. They're okay. loaded, the majority of them are loaded on the website. There are a couple that, um, Neula has transitioned from a paper format <coughs> to an online, and so there are a couple I'm still working with them to, to locate within their files. Um, and so my hope is to have that rectified by the end of this week and then they will all be up on the website and then I would propose that at uh, the next study session you would be able to pull them up specifically off the website see what a, what the recommendations were to be checked make sure that there aren't any questions those types of things specifically I think at the study session what we had talked about were the um, ADM counts for the virtual students um, we needed your three recommendations and admin's three recommendations as far as what we needed to put in that policy as far as what we we're going to require for proof. Right. So I talked to Melissa Lehman because she has the majority of the students with the enrollment and the follow through. And so she gave me those recommendations okay. and those have been marked and on the website. Cool. And then the other one I have on my notes is the wellness committee. Yes. So working. Or the drinking water. Yep. Kathy Wilkinson. Okay. I think that was. I think that was it as far as the decisions we had to make. Okay. Thanks, Casey. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No, I need a motion to approve the second reading of the policies as presented. So moved. Okay. Motion by Casey. Second. Second by Katie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, motion carries it too. Okay, next item. We have the uh, adopt the preliminary bond resolution. Uh, there's a couple of items related to the bond. Rochester Community School Corporation is seeking to sell for improvements. Uh, Ice Miller has been consulted as bond counsel as a procedure that needs to be followed in order to incur this bond. And we have a preliminary bond resolution to review, which explains and asks the board to find one, that the present facilities of the school corporation are not adequate to provide the proper education environment for students. Two, that there are not sufficient funds available or provided in existing tax levies to pay for the cost of needed renovations and improvements, including the purchase of equipment, buses, and technology. Three, that the school corporation should issue bonds in an amount not to exceed 995000 Four, that the bond will bear interest at a rate for rates not exceeding 5%, which interest will be paid on January 15th and July 15th and each year beginning July 15th of 2022. Uh, five, the prior, that prior to the sale of the bond, public notices will be published in the Rochester Sentinel 
in the Indianapolis Business Journal. And six, that the board will discuss how the bond proceeds will be appropriated at a meeting after the notice of the hearing on appropriations is posted. So, do I have a motion to adopt the preliminary bond resolution? And if anybody, I don't mean to interrupt, but if anybody has specific questions, uh, Brock Browser is here from uh, Ice uh, Miller. Baker Tilly. Baker Tilly, I'm sorry. Thank, I, I apologize. <laughs> so he's here if we have any specific <clears throat> questions or um, any advice that you might be seeking from them. And you should go ahead and get your motion in a second before you go into discussion with that. So. Okay. Uh, and I, I could read the, the preliminary bond resolution if needed. Won't you have a motion? Okay. Did you get your motion? So moved. Second. Okay. okay. Motion by Casey. Second by Katie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion carries 6 0. And uh, so the bond reads preliminary bond resolution. Where is Rochester School? Community School Corporation uh, is a school corporation organized and existing under the provisions of Indiana Code 2023. And whereas the Board of School Trustees finds that the present facilities of school corporation are not adequate to provide the proper educational environment to the students now attending or who will attend its schools, and whereas the Board finds that there are not sufficient funds available or provided for an existing law tax levies in which pay for the cost of the renovation and the improvements to the school facilities, including the purchase of equipment, buses, technology, and that the school corporation should issue bonds in an amount not to exceed $995,000 uh, for the purpose of providing funds to be applied on the project, and that the bonds in such maximum amount should now be authorized now, therefore, be it resolved by the board of the issuer that for the purpose of attaining funds to be applied on the cost of the project, there shall be issued and sold the bonds of the school corporation to be designated as general obligation bonds of 2021. The bonds shall be in a principal amount not to exceed $995,000, bearing an interest rate or rates not exceeding 5% per annum, and uh, the exact rate or rates to be determined by bidding, which interest shall be payable on January 15th and July 15th in each year beginning July 15th, 2022. The bonds shall be fully registered in the denomination of $5,000 or integral multiples thereof, and shall mature serially or be subject to mandatory redemption on January 15th and July 15th, beginning no earlier than July 15th, 2022, through no later than January 15th of 2026. The bonds shall be redeemable in the dates and in amounts determined by the issuer. Be it further resolved that prior to the sale of bonds, a public sale notice of such sale will be published in the Rochester Sentinel in the Indiana Business Journal prior to the date fixed for the sale of the said bonds. At the time fixed for the opening of bids, the board or its designated committee shall meet. All bids shall be opened in the presence of the board or such committee, and the award shall be made by the board or such committee. Be it further resolved by the board of the issuer that the matter of appropriating the proceeds of the bonds authorized at this meeting be taken up for consideration as soon as notice of the hearing and the appropriation can be given as provided by law, and that the secretary of the board is directed to give notice of the public hearings to be held prior to the final action on such appropriation, which notice shall be published in the Rochester Sentinel at least 10 days prior to the date set for such meeting. Be it further resolved that the secretary of the board be and hereby is directed to give notice of determination to issue the bonds which notice shall be published twice, one week apart, in the Rochester Sentinel. Also, that notice of determination shall be posted in three public places in the school corporation. And it's passed and adopted the 16th day of August. Okay, any questions? Now we have a declaration of 
official intent. To reimburse expenditures resolution. Okay, this will be a you know, motion to approve this, and I'll read it after it's passed, if it is passed. So I need a motion to approve declaration of official intent to reimburse expenditures on the resolution. So moved. Okay, motion by Kyle McLaughlin. Second. Second by Casey. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, motion carries 6 0. Declaration of official intent to reimburse expenditures. Whereas Rochester Community School Corporation intends to finance the renovation and of and improvements to the school facilities, including the purchase of equipment, buses, and technology. Whereas the school corporation reasonably expects to reimburse certain costs of the project with proceeds of obligations to be incurred by on behalf of the school corporation in an amount not to exceed $995,000. And whereas the school corporation expects to issue obligations for the project and to use the proceeds to reimburse or pay for the cost of the project. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the school corporation declares its official intent to fund the project with proceeds of obligations incurred by the school corporation in an amount not to exceed $995,000. Be it further resolved that the school corporation reasonably expects to reimburse itself from Proceeds of obligations issued by the school corporation for the cost of the project paid prior to the issuance of the bonds. And it's passed and adopted the 16th day of August, 2021. Okay, any questions? Okay. Next item, donations. Did anybody have any questions for Brock? So you want to comment if you don't mind? Yes, sure. please. That uh, for those of you who have refinanced, purchased new homes, it's a really good time to be issuing bonds. So it's a really nice time to consider bonds like this at a low cost to taxpayers. And probably the most important part of this project, I believe Todd may have uh, distributed some materials, but. The most important part of this project is no impact to taxpayers above what they're currently paying in the 2021 tax season. So that was uh, the main point that this board has already heard and uh, gave us direction on as we work through the administration team. So two key points, low interest rates, no increase to taxpayers. So with uh, your decisions tonight, we'll continue working with your team and get these bonds sold. Thank you so much. Thank you. Donations. Polk County Solid Waste District, $500 for RMS Recycling. Treasures for the Heart Ministries, $1,000 for Backpack Food Pantry. Kroger, $158.32 for the Rochester Community School Corporation General Donations. Kim Burton, Teacher Supplies to Columbia. Were there any additional? Okay, a motion to approve the donations as presented. So moved. Okay, motion by Casey. All second. Second by Joe. Any other discussion? All in favor? Dial. Okay, motion carried by zero. We think you came on. Come on. There he is. He's, he's still on mute. He's still muted. Okay, recommendations. Marianne Miller, special uh, Riddle Special Needs Instructional Assistant, hourly rate of ten dollars and one cent. Andy Gearhart, Riddle Special Needs Instructional Assistant, a rate of eleven dollars and fifty-two cents. Jennifer Helder, Middle School Service Assistant, ten dollars. Kimberly Scholl, part-time interpreter for Columbia Sign Language, hourly rate of eighteen dollars. Uh, reassignment, Christy Bitterling, 
from RMS instructional system to RHS instructional system. <coughs> Hourly rate is the same as before. Uh, we have CIA coach Nikki Overmeyer from middle school, a stipend of 2,250. We have a resignation of Brittany Piercy, RHS drama director. And our ACA recommendations are Jamie Kirkwood, RHS student council, at a stipend of $483. Michelle Gibson, RHS half the key club, a stipend of $182.50. And Catherine uh, Lucker is half the key club for $180.50. Then we have an additional, um, Brittany Scaly be hired as a part-time English language learner teacher for the 2021 year. She will work 15 hours a week. And her pay will be $25 per hour. We have recommend a justice salary of Chad Pyle for a special education teaching position at the middle school. Um, Mr. Pyle has 15 years of experience and is currently only being compensated for 14 years as it was documented in his application. The paperwork received from his previous employment verified he has 15 years. So his previous salary is 50700 and the recommended for 15 year experience is 51850 Thank you, Cassie. Okay, any uh, other questions or comments? Okay, need a motion to approve the uh, personnel report? So moved. Okay, motion by Katie. Second. Same by Casey. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, motion to carry 6 0. Thank you. that um, Jason at Jason's building at Columbia we have had to close two classrooms one is the developmentally delayed preschool classroom and the second being a kindergarten classroom uh, when we were able to meet as an administrative team this afternoon we had nearly 100 students out at Columbia um, that's right at 35 or 30 I'm sorry 30 percent um, 21 percent of those students are out due to some level of COVID. Either they've tested positive or waiting on their test results, or they are home because they have been, um, uh, they're isolated due to contact tracing. Um, I did not have a chance to talk with Luke. I know he was called out of the meeting as uh, his nurse and his staff needed help with contact tracing. But prior to his leaving, we had uh, 15 COVID related concerns at Riddle with three teachers out middle we had seven uh, with three pending results um, and at the high school there were 31 students out ill and we were trying to track down exactly what that meant for the high school um, it's it is becoming more and more difficult and as an administrative team we talked this afternoon that um, last year when we had these kinds of uh, outbreaks and closures we could track them specifically to something outside of the district um, what we're seeing now is definitively being tracked within classrooms and so we are taking the initial steps to do more deep cleaning asking teachers to, to separate the rooms as best they can but I would respectfully ask that I have the opportunity to work with the team some more this week and send out a doodle to work with the board to schedule a meeting 
we may need to make potential changes to our reopening document based on the data and information that we're collecting here. My fear is that should we not do something, we are going to be closing entire buildings and it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Um, I know it becomes very political. I know it becomes very emotional. Um, I also know that the public does not want us to close buildings, um, but we need to do something because what we're currently doing is not working. Um, so no changes at this time. We're deep cleaning classrooms. We're doing those things, but definitively what we're doing is not working. Uh, Brock was just in here and shared that Avon schools just went to mask mandates, those types of things, but we need to do a little bit more uh, deep dive as an administrative team and then bring to you our suggestions to make sure that we can continue as best we can to keep this district up and flowing. Um, I know it's not necessarily what the community is doing, but I would respectfully argue that what we do, how we have to function, the classrooms that we're in, uh, we need to do something differently. What we are doing is not working. So I'll work more with the team. They had shared uh, some of their concerns. I want them to talk to teachers. I know we have our CTA discussions coming up this week. And then I'd like to send out a doodle for us uh, to schedule the possibility of changes to the reopening document as we move forward. So we have some tough decisions going forward here. We do. And we're collecting that data for everybody to look at. Decisions we like to make but are necessary. Do we know uh, the students that are contracted becoming ill, are they worse than last year's? I mean, is it affecting kids? Is it harder on them, or how bad is it? I, mean, I know that at know Jason's or? building, they're running very high fevers. Is that correct? Sure. Um, other buildings, I just high fevers. Are you seeing anything else? Just the chest colds. Seeing that riddle that there's actually symptomatic. Um, it's a lot. It's different than it was last year. Yeah, it's different. I, mean, I don't know. I think we've had as many or more positive cases this year in our building than we had all of last year as far as and so I mean a lot of our close or a lot of our quarantining and stuff that took place last year was taking place because of family members and things like that it wasn't because kids were in the building and sick and that's not the same this year we have kids in the building that are sick and kids that are in close contact with a sick child and that wipes people out pretty quick. And we're just concerned for the safety. And the data shows that those close contacts are also becoming now. Correct. It's being and transmitted. And this variant's more contagious, I guess, too, mm -hmm. is probably part of the problem. In, in cases uh, such as, as the flu in, in years past, was there not some kind of a guideline as far as what percentage sure. of students? Um, I, I, so, I mean, this is viral, such as, and so is the flu. We know COVID is a different virus, but I, I would like to have something to, so to look at as a reference. So in the past, uh, the standard has been at 20% of um, any one building or 20% of your district population, then you would close down work with the, right now, Dr. Rayburn has lifted those because of the nature of COVID and contact tracing and how that impacts, but in the Jason's building alone, we're at 30%. All right, not the best news to end on. No, and I, I appreciate the team, I appreciate the teachers, I know that uh, they are already, last year we were having those meetings at 7.15 in the morning, we were having to shuffle personnel that do those types of things and we're finding at this point we're already uh, short staffed it's been very difficult to shuffle those personnel and then when you have specific outbreaks within uh, classrooms and you are exceeding uh, typically they were saying two per classroom Jason is exceeding that and, and uh, his classrooms then we have to shut those down in its entirety and my fear is should we not do something different this is going to perpetuate and again, the data, we want to collect meaningful data. We want to bring that to you. The differentials we're seeing this year as last year it seemed to happen outside. We can track it. We can trace it. This year, definitively, they are transmitting within classrooms. No 
Okay, uh, board members, any other comments? If not, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and uh, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Lauren, I just wanted to.